Yo, what is up, guys? It's me, Ashley's Gaming, and in this video, I will be going over the top five best sidekicks in the game currently. Now, with the recent update 2.67, Ankama changed the sidekicks and the incarnations. Now, for those of you who don't know, incarnations were pretty much weapons that you could equip in order to transform into a certain uh, animal or monster. And people usually use them for hard quest fights uh, to make it a lot easier for certain classes. But Ankama changed that in the last update. Um, in this dev blog you can read all about this, what the reasoning behind this uh, change is and what exactly Ankama wanted to achieve with this. If you want to read about this, I will link it in the description below. Now in game there is a special section with sidekicks, it shows you all of the sidekicks that are currently available in the game as well as their characteristics and their spells. Now it doesn't show you how you can get these uh, sidekicks so therefore we are yet again going to use the Dofus Poodle Noobs website. There is a special section about the new sidekicks with a small introduction explaining what the sidekicks are, how to use them. And uh, I think there's like an inn in Ankama village as well, where the NPCs of the sidekicks are. I think there's also a quest that you can do. And below here you can see the eight ways to drop the sidekicks. Uh, of course you can buy some of them in the Ogrind market. Uh, with Ogrinds you can craft the, uh, some of them. Uh, some of them can be dropped. I know some of them even are dropped in the infinite dreams dropped a couple of them so far You can buy them from merchants uh, with that. They mean NPCs um, For example the almanac temple. There's also the free ghost incarnations are now available to be purchased in the grocery store in the free ghost village uh, some of them are obtained by questing some of them are obtained by exchanging resources with an NPC and some of them are obtained by achievements. Now below here there's a complete list of all the sidekicks in the game uh, with all the ways of how you can obtain them. You can even at the top here sort by how you can get them. Um, there's also four of them. I think you need 50,000 Colo tokens for that. For example this one, this is one of them. Uh, Sidekicks that you can get by exchanging resources. Uh, so yeah, that's an entire list. Um, basically, what I did is I went over the in-game list, went over all the spells of all the sidekicks and made up a list. A top 5, uh, which I personally think is the best uh, 5 sidekicks in the game. Now keep in mind, when you're playing a team of 4, you are most likely not going to be using these sidekicks. Unless you are planning to do the uh, sidekick achievements where you have to do a dungeon with the sidekick. Other than that, sidekicks are mainly used when you play like one or two accounts. You want to fill up the team to be for a loot. Uh, as well as solo quest fights where you are allowed to be using a sidekick. So those are the conditions um, that I basically kept in my mind when choosing which sidekicks are the best currently. So therefore I also looked at sidekicks that could buff the AP, uh, the MP or the power from yourself, which is pretty handy to have. Um, so yeah, basically the top 5 that I came up with was the number 5 sidekick is the Cubitus sidekick, which is uh, this one. Cubitus. Um, the spells are pretty much like a Kra, uh, mainly agility Kra. This one has um, long range air steel, which is basically absorptive arrow. You have this spell, which is magic arrow, steals to range, high range as well. Uh, this is a 4 AP spell, pretty much a little bit like explosive arrow, but then agility. And then you have 5 AP spell, which does pretty good damage as well. And. This spell works a little bit like a concentrating arrow, it attracts towards the center. And you have a self buff spell, which only on the sidekick, of course, uh, it gives you the unlockable state and 2 MP. Now, this sidekick is pretty nice when you need some damage for longer range. So let's say you're doing a quest fight or a solo fight in general as an IOP or Sakri or any PC class and you need some more range damage then this sidekick is pretty good. It's, I think it's one of the best sidekicks when it comes to range damage. 
The only downside of this sidekick is it doesn't buff yourself, so that's pretty pretty bad. But the long range damage pretty much makes up for that. Now here I show you guys the spells. Uh, the first spell is the absorptive arrow, 500 damage, long range. The second spell is like a um, magic arrow, pretty good as well. And then you have this spell, which is AoE, big AoE. It doesn't hit allies either, so that's pretty nice as well. And then you have the 5 AP spell, which does pretty good damage. And of course... You have this spell, which is basically Concentrating Arrow. I really, really like this uh, sidekick when it comes to long-range damage. Now, the number 4 sidekick, however, does have some buffs. It is the Scale sidekick, which can be bought from uh, the Ogren market. I think 3,000 Ogrens. Um, I'm pretty much sure that the market in Bantai or Brockma is pretty much uh, a lot cheaper than buying it with Oak Grinds. The spells are a 2 AP buff, a 2 MP and 150 power buff, as well as giving the unlockable state and you have damage sharing. The sidekick mainly does water damage and can uh, reduce the effects of duration by one as well. I'll show you the sidekick in a game. Now, like I said, it can buff the AP, which is pretty nice. It can buff the MP as well. Uh, it's only for one turn, I think. The AP is for two turns. Uh, damage sharing, which is pretty good as well if you need some protection for quest fights. The only downside, I think, is that one spell is diagonally. This spell is pretty close range. So, the damage of these spells, I don't really like. Other than that, uh, it's a pretty good sidekick when it comes to uh, buffing yourself. So let's go over the number 3. Now at number 3 we have Styx, which is this one. It's what's previously an incarnation, I think, at Banta I although I never used it. When going over these spells, I was like, hmm, this is not too bad, actually. It can buff the power and AP for two turns in an area of effect around the sidekick, which is pretty much uh, pretty good, actually. It can buff multiple allies, therefore. It can switch positions, and uh, on the position where the sidekick will end up, if there's, like, enemies around it, it will... Increase the damage of the first spell suffered by 30%, which is pretty nice. I will show you guys how it works in a second. And uh, then you have an attract spell, four cells, and the sidekick has pretty good range as well. 1 to 9 range on this, which is AoE uh, in area. And then you have 1 to 8. It steals power from enemies for two turns. And then you have water steal in an AoE as well. Now, the swapping spell pretty much works like this. Um, let's say my uh, self is next to the enemy. I will cast the swap spell. Now you can see the next spell that I will be doing will be doing 30% more damage. Uh, the damage is pretty good on this, actually. So I really, really like it. Uh, the 2 AP buff, power buff, uh, 3 range. And the damage is pretty good as well. Uh, this spell, I think, does damage on enemy around it so it's more used in group fights other than that uh i really really like this uh, sidekick now the number two sidekick in the game is the will killson most of you guys probably know this was the best incarnation that you could use back before the update now the will killson basically revolves around doing critical damage it has an AoE spell that reduces enemy critical hits and buffs yourself 5 crits per enemy in the AoE. It buffs 20% critical hits as well as to the nearest ally that you have. And then you have this spell which is a self buff uh, for the sidekick. It buffs 50 critical damage. And for 3 turns for each critical hit that you do, you do 15 more critical damage. Now you have this spell, which reduces the enemy critical resistance by 80. I think it's even AoE as well. 
And then you have two spells. So this one is 4 AP, does pretty good damage. And this one is 3 AP, 1 to 10 range. It steals crits and does two lines of damage. So it does insane amounts of damage. I'll show you guys in the fight. I was debating to maybe even put this one at number one. But it kind of depends on the situation, I guess, what you, where you're going to need the sidekicks for. Uh, but I'll show you the damage that it can do, right? So you have the critical buff. And even though my panda is pretty far, it is the nearest ally, so it still gets the critical buff. So then you have the critical damage buff. And then you have this one, which steals crits. And now look at this, uh, I think. Yeah, I'll be reducing the crits from the enemy. Like 1k damage. I really like it. So let's say I buff this one a little bit. And now I'm basically doing 1.2k damage on this spell. And then you have this. Like, the only sad thing is it can only do 3 spells a turn. But it does crazy amounts of damage like 1200 damage on a crit 1000 on a crit and when the buffs are out you can just rebuff like this and look at this man 1200 damage 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 wise this is the number one sidekick in the game now the only reason why there's another sidekick on number one um which is the ecto sidekick it is very close, so if you guys disagree, let me know in the comments below, but it really depends on the situation of the fight. Because personally, I would probably be using the Will Kilson sidekick over anything. But if you are keep in mind that you maybe are like playing a solo character, you want to do some fights, you want to do some self buffs, then the uh, Ecto is a pretty good sidekick as well. It works a little bit like the old school Osmodas. It buffs uh, the power, uh, the AP, and it can reduce damage. And it basically um, is stronger on summons. So if you have some summons, then they will be buffed even more. So let's say you're playing an Osa, definitely get this sidekick. It has three intelligence spells. Which do pretty good damage, uh, also from a high range. So, so let's say I put the waster next to me, and I will do the power buff, which is an AOE. It buffs both the waster and my panda, but it doubles on the waster. And then you have the AP buff. You have some shields, and then you have a couple of intelligence spells. One of them is a one range AOE spell, which does pretty good damage. And then you have a long range 2 AP spell, decent damage, as well as a 3 AP range spell. And these spells do more damage on enemy summons. Now, like I said, it's a close thing between all of these sidekicks and it highly depends on where you're going to use these sidekicks for. If it's for a quest fight or like grinding enemies to do some XPing. Personally, the Will Kilson sidekick is pretty nice as well. It only needs, I think... I'll show you guys uh, the list. Now, the Cubita sidekick can be bought by uh, going to the Almanax Temple and pay 750 Almanax tokens. And... I think this is the Ecto sidekick. Uh, you will get it when you get 2000 achievement points, so that's not even too bad. The skill sidekick can be bought by O grinds or just go to the Bonta shop and buy it. Um, the stick sidekick. Here it says it can be uh, completed by completing the all for one quest. But I think you can also buy it from an NPC in the grocery store in Bonta. I'm not sure. The same goes for the Will Kilson sidekick. But maybe... Uh, you need to complete the quest in order to be able to buy the sidekick. That could be a possibility. So yeah, that's it basically for the list of best sidekicks in my opinion. Well, let me know in the comments below what you think of this. Let me know which sidekick you prefer to use. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care and bye.